I remember sitting down on the couch and I was crying. I was like, oh my God, finally I lost this baby. Just like that. I got married in um, 2014. Um, I got into marriage expecting to get, to get um, pregnant immediately, but unfortunately for me, I had to wait and um, I ended up waiting for four years and some months. Um, fortunately for me, on my 35th birthday, I, you know, I was so much in tears saying, oh God, I'm not pregnant yet. And my journey in life is still going and there's no baby, you know, to carry, to play with. But two weeks after my birthday, I got to know that um, I was pregnant. Uh, mixed feelings, I was happy, I was in shock, how did it happen, when did it happen? Um, because I had gone through the drama, the drama of waiting with my in-laws, with friends, asking you, what are you doing, want to do IVF, want to do this, want to do that, lots of, lots of advices from different people, but God came through and I got pregnant. I thought it was going to be fun all through. But that was the beginning of heaven, would I say hell, on earth. So before I got pregnant, yeah, I've been seeing a guy, we've been talking back and forth, and we had used a lot of drugs, but none worked. So 2018, I decided to go on healthy living, I changed my diet. I was eating good food, I wasn't doing too much oil, I wasn't taking anything junky, no junks, and just like that, it came through. So I went back to my guy name after I found out I was pregnant, and we started the process, told me to come back a month, three months after. You can imagine the fear every day waking up, are you there, are you there, and then because they had to hear heartbeats until the heartbeat is heard. Not three months, well, until the heartbeat is heard, you can't ascertain that you're pregnant. So finally the heartbeat came, but before, before the time of the heartbeat, I had serious morning, morning sickness. I was always vomiting. I couldn't keep anything down. I couldn't take water. I couldn't take anything. Once I put something in my mouth, it's just coming all out. Psh. This wasn't fun for me. I felt, oh God, if you if you had made me wait this long, you shouldn't make me, you know, suffer through pregnancy. I should just have it smoothly. But that wasn't my case, you know. I was I couldn't even go anywhere. I was in bed for almost three months because I always had to stay um, resting. Um, I had to do some. I had to take some injections intermittently, like. I take it today, I don't take it tomorrow, just to keep the baby good for like 16 weeks. So 16 weeks came by, it went, and just when I thought that it was fine, the good thing is I'm an entrepreneur, so I had my own time to myself, but even at that, I couldn't open my store for, for, for like four or five months. I couldn't and of course it meant it meant my business was suffering but I mean I would have I would give anything just remembering it now I would have given anything just to make sure that the baby was fine and the baby was going to be okay after all being said and done after injection then I entered another phase this was now the bleeding phase I found out I got pregnant in September, late September. So the whole of September, October, November, December, I wasn't doing anything. I couldn't do anything. I was at home. Then January, in fact, Christmas Day, when everybody was eating meat, and I was just discharged from the hospital because I'd had my first bleeding experience. I was, um, I don't know, I just started spotting, so they called it, and that wasn't right for the baby. So I had to go through a scan. They put me on bed rest. And then on Christmas Day, I was discharged. So you can imagine when everybody was enjoying, I was just there, laying down in bed. Don't do this, don't do that. You know, it was just frustrating. And I didn't want to be the reason. 
I don't want to be the reason why the baby would not stay. So I ensured I followed, even though I don't like keeping to rules, I had to follow rules this time around. And then in January, I remember that was like, I had my, that was, that was, in January I had like the greatest panic of all. I had resumed to my studio and I was working on a client and um, the next thing, I I'd even I'd worked on two different clients and I was working on my third client and then the next thing, blood everywhere, just like that. And I was wondering where's it coming from. I remember sitting down on the couch and I was crying. I was like, oh my God, finally I lost this baby. I really lost this baby. I, I was in tears and I remember my friend trying to help me with some wipes, trying to keep the blood from coming down, but you know, and the clients that came to do the makeover was even like, you know what, well, just take it easy, just take a deep breath, nothing's wrong with your baby, you are stressed. Of course, I said I was back to my feet, so I was driving, I was going up and down, but not up and down the way I would usually want to, because I was really taking it slow. But here I was bleeding and I thought, oh, this is the final straw. So I rushed myself to the hospital. I called my husband, where are you? The baby is gone, I'm bleeding. And said, so just take it easy, I'm coming. And then I had to go to the clinic. I went straight to um, the x-ray room. Um, I had to go and do x-ray, I had to go and do a scan, sorry because that's what they always tell me to do, go and do a scan. So I went there, did a scan, and you can imagine those two, three minutes of waiting, they like, were like the longest minute ever, longest hours ever. But thank God he came back and said the baby was fine. Nothing missing, nothing broken, the baby was fine. So that was like my fifth month or fourth month, fourth month. Four months, I guess, and then we continued again. But immediately after that, it was a no-no. So I started sitting at home. So I was home all through. I didn't do anything. I didn't go anywhere. Of course, I still had one or two bleeding after then, but it wasn't anything as serious as January, the the the, the act, the one that happened in January. So because of all this that I've gone through. My doctor had advised that um, it would be best that I don't go into labor. Number one, because of my age. Number two, they told me because of my height. And number three, because I had waited for a while and they didn't want to take chances. So I had, I had discussed with them. I booked a date, which was supposed to be May, May 28th. I wanted it to be June 1st um, because, well, June is very special to me. My EDD date was 6th, June of 6th, or 6th of June rather, but they didn't want me to get to that because of reasons I stated already. And so I told my mom, of course, this was my first child. I'm the first girl in my family, even though my younger brother had put to bed. But I mean, this is someone they've been waiting for. So everybody around me has just been anticipating and waiting. Let's, let her just get through this. But I told my mom, okay, this is a date we've stated. Please come and all that and all that. I wasn't ready um, because I was looking at the date I had booked for um, the procedure, which was supposed to be 28th of May. So I still had a lot of things I needed to do. Like I said, I was taking things easy, but I was still going to church because I'm in the choir, I would go for rehearsal. So I remember that day I went for rehearsals and I was just feeling funny. And um, a sister of mine in church saw me and said, ah, you this girl, you, this, the way you're carrying this pregnancy, as if, you know, as if it's still four months or five months. And I laughed. I said, ah, no, I'm entering my, my ninth month by, you know, the week, the coming week, and we both laughed. But after that Saturday, I started feeling funny. On Sunday, I didn't go to church. I was just feeling funny. I couldn't explain the feeling. Remember, I'd gone through all this 
bleeding and injections. So I had fear all through, all through. And I went online to read some things. I, I was a reader throughout that time. I always wanted to know what to do part time or if anything happened to me, I wanted to know, you know, but sometimes I find something, sometimes I don't. And, you know, most times I had to always compare with the white. Uh, that's the Western world. But by Monday, I just started having this pain that I couldn't explain. Usually my aunt Natal is um, Tuesdays. So I told my husband, this is how I'm feeling. And my husband, the kind of job he does, he's never around. He's not at home. He's an auditor, so it's always up and down. So I was always the only one at home. But luckily for me, that Saturday that I, I'm talking about, my mom-in-law sent a help to me. So I had, I had someone at home with me. And um, Monday, when I called him to say, this is how I'm feeling, he said, oh, you know what, just relax. Your aunt Nata is Tuesday. Why don't you just wait till then? I was like, okay. And of course, like I said, I wasn't due. And I wasn't even nine months yet. <laughs> So I started praying. I had fear. I had fear. God. <laughs> I was always going to the toilet to say, okay, is anything wrong? You know, all these things we read up in the book. But the pain just persisted. It didn't go away. So I, on the day of my antenatal, something just said, you know, why don't you just go and check? Do a scan again. And so I went in for a scan. Something pricked me again and said, ask for your weight. So I said, ask for the baby's weight. Well, all this, I didn't check for my baby's sex. I didn't check for, his, for the sex of the baby. So I didn't even know um, what he or she was. So I just said, please, what's the weight of the baby? And they said 3.1. I said, okay, if it's 3.1, if anything happens now, then I mean, so be it. I mean, 3.1 is the weight some people give birth to their babies. So I was a bit relaxed. So I saw my gynae that day and I told him this is how I'm feeling. Before I saw the gynae, I saw a nurse. I said, I'm feeling this way, this way. And she touched my tummy. She said, ah, this is contraction. You are contracting. I said, contracting care. No, I'm not supposed to contract yet. It's not time. You know, and she said, ah, that's you contracting, but see your doctor and whatever he says, we'll take it from there. And so when I got to his office, I told him, I said, Grandpa, I call him Grandpa, though he's my doctor, but I call him Grandpa. So I said, Grandpa, this is how I'm feeling, you know. I and mean, of course, they have my history because, like I said, I've been using them even while I was trying to get pregnant. So I said, um, this is how I'm feeling. He said, it's Braxton X. It's nothing like that. I said, ah, but when I read, Braxton X didn't say um, kicks, it didn't say it would be, you know, just painful. I said, you know, Nigeria, you know, we always have fibroid, um, your age, all that could add to it. And I was like, okay. He said, but you know what, go home. Checked, told me to lie down, checked me, I was fine, the baby was heartbeat. Every time they have to check heartbeats, you know, but it was there, the heartbeat was there. And so he said, go home. Just relax again. I've told you not to take things serious, rest. So I went home. But I remember from when I left that clinic, getting home was war because the pain increased. Even it really, really increased. I couldn't drive. So my friend's husband came, picked me up with my car because I, I drove there. So he picked us up and then I got home. I called a friend that I had given birth before, and I said, this is what I'm feeling like. I've been to the hospital, and they said, there's nothing, but I feel something is wrong. She said, you know, we'll go take a shower. I called my husband, he wasn't back. This was around 11 p.m. He wasn't back still. So I took the shower as a friend advised, and then I decided to go lay down in bed. My husband came back around to 12, I said, yeah, this is how I'm feeling. He said, don't worry. The doctor has told you that there's nothing wrong, so don't worry, nothing is wrong. So 
I slept. And then like 12, or 10 after 12, 10 after 12, I got up from the bed and I just found out that I was weaving on myself. I couldn't control it. And I was like, babes, babes, I'm weaving on the bed. And I jumped down. You know, I remember him running down from the bed as well, said, you weaving on yourself, okay, just go and take a shower again. And then I ran to the bathroom, I took a shower. He, he, of course, he doesn't have any experience. He just, he changed the bed and asked me to come back to bed. And I, went, I remember going back to bed, but two minutes after, I had the urge to go to the toilet again, to wee wee. And then I went to urinate and I, I used my, um, the tissue pad to clean up. And lo and behold, there was blood. I was like, blood? I mean, I'd never read anywhere that blood was what you would see. You know, there's supposed to be water, there's supposed to be mucus, but I didn't see all that. And so even started, I started panicking. I took another set of tissue and I swapped again and this time it was clotted blood, thick clotted blood. And I, I, I came and I said, something is wrong. Something is wrong with my baby. Can we go to the hospital? And I remember that night I was crying. And I said, God, you didn't bring me this fast, leave me. You know, I couldn't have, so I called my bestie. She's in the medical line, but she stays outside the country. So I called and said, this is what happened. I saw blood. And then she said, wherever you are, just start going to the hospital now. You know, so I got myself to the hospital. We got to the hospital. Thank God my house and the hospital. Well, on the day that there's traffic jam, <laughs> I could use one hour, 45 minutes to get there. But thank God it was midnight already. It was midnight already. So it was like a 15 minutes drive tops 20 minutes we were there when we got to the hospital there was no guy in around <laughs> remember I said I'd planned this thing I'd planned it so I already had a doctor I wanted on ground because I knew the MD the person I called grandpa I knew he wasn't going to be there he's he's never there during procedures except his emergency and he's on ground so I'd spoken to a doctor friend that I usually see when I don't see him and I said, I would like you to be there since you know so much, since you, you know. But here I was at night, nobody. So I, I was referred to a doctor that I'd had an issue with, is a general um, of this new student doctors, you know. I'd had an issue with him during my pregnancy time. I was, I, I, I can't remember what happened to me and he was going to give me drugs. Remember I said I read a lot. So I'd, I'd read that I wasn't supposed to take that drug and I said, why would you want to give me this drug, knowing I'm pregnant? So instantly when I saw him, I said, oh my God, why this guy? Why, why of all days, why would he be the one on duty? But he was the one on duty and there was nothing I could do. And then, did I say that the level of pain had gone so high? I didn't even know what was happening again. I just kept screaming. I was in so much pain. And so he checked my file. He saw that I wasn't supposed to go into labor. He saw that. He saw the reports basically, and so he said they had to call um, a consultant, like a professional. So, luckily for me, they had one of their gynae doctors that was staying around. So he came in. This is someone I never even saw during my antenatal. So it's not like he even knows me. I have no familiarity between us. But he came, and then he had to do that that I dread so much. He had to check how far. He had to you know, inserts his hands into me to check how far or what was going on basically. And so he said, oh, madam, you're calm. Of course, that was so painful, so painful. And I didn't read it anywhere that it was painful, but it was so, so painful. He said, madam, you're two centimeters gone. And when he brought out his finger, there was blood, like a lot of blood. And he said, madam, we need to, um, take you to the theater immediately. So I remember that in all this pain that I was feeling, you know, my husband was there, and then when it got to the time of um, going into the theater room, they stopped him. They said he couldn't go with me. And I remember how I felt that day. I felt so bad. I felt really, really bad. I felt sad. I felt alone, you know. I. My two people are looking for the kids. How come one person has to bear it all? 
I was the one that had the vomiting. I was the one that had the injections. I was the one that had all the hormonal difference. All everything, you know, all that came, you know, just came back, and I was crying. And I asked. I even pleaded. Can't you just let him in? I said that's their policy. You can't go in. And then I got into the theater. Um, I, I was injected with all the injections they needed to give me, even while in pain. The baby came out at 3.45. That time, I, 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 okay, I later got to know that they were done and the baby was out. So I was out as well, but I couldn't see my baby because I was all, you know, unconscious. So the next day, which was Wednesday, um, everybody was around, definitely. Everybody jubilating. I remember I woke up and um, I asked for my baby, and they brought him to me. And you know, it felt like everything that happened to me in the whole season it felt like it never happened. You know, because I was finally holding this boy, and. Those years of wasting were finally gone. I mean, to crown it all, I had a boy. It was the happiest moment ever. Even though I had pains, <laughs> remember I had to go through surgery, but he was what all the pains, he was what all the injection, he was what all, all that I went through, it was just worth it. And so I saw him, of course I couldn't carry him because I was in pains. But there, my mom was there, my mom in law was there. And I was just happy. But still, you know, you know when they say you hit the wall, I had not hit the wall still, even with everything that happened to me. But I realized that that same day when my doctor, my own doctor, grandpa, when he came in for ward round, he came in with a doctor and I remember they said something like they had to do emergency, you know, they use their own terminology, but I kept hearing that emergency, and I, I had that emergency like for two days. So I had to call one of the, the nurses and I said, I've been hearing this emergency, you know, emergency word where I, 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 of course, then I could pronounce it because I was hearing it every time, but now I can't really put my head to it. And I said, why, why? You know, why are they saying this? And then I was telling her that I was going to report the anesthetics lady to the MD because I felt that she was not empathetic enough. That, you know, the way she was shouting at me and all, and all that. And the lady said, Ma, be thankful. Please be thankful. She said, do you know what happened to you? I said, what happened? She said, you had a um, placenta eruption. And um, if I had not brought out your baby at the time we brought him out, you would have been saved and your baby would have died. It took us seven minutes to revive your baby because when he came out, you know. So placenta eruption meant that the placenta is what connects me, my womb, and my baby. So everything that he takes, he takes it through my placenta. So once my placenta had detached itself, it meant that the baby wasn't feeding, he wasn't having anything from me anymore. And so that's why he was trying to come out himself. And because he had stayed longer, so placenta probably had come out maybe two days before. And that was why the blood was, you know, that was why I had that bleeding. Not just bleeding, that was why I had that clotted blood. And so she told me, rather than complain about anybody, you know, just be thankful that your boy is alive. There's no complication. And like I said, my baby wasn't due. He was 36. So he clocked 36 on Tuesday, and I gave birth to him. That's 36 weeks. He clocked nine months, and then I gave birth to him, like, the, the next day. So, and when you read in the book, they tell you kids that are not 38 weeks, you know, they are not completely all right or completely formed. They are not completely developed. That's the word. So 
when she told me that, you can just imagine, I cried and cried and cried. You know, and I told my husband, I said, ah, who did I annoy in my journey of life? You know, like, even through the whole pain and the whole injection and the whole vomit and everything, why did this still have to happen? But through it all, I'm thankful that the baby came. And even when they said he had, you know, he had um, jaundice, traces of jaundice, um, it wasn't anything serious because they just, they said sunlight, it will gradually, his body would um, gradually digest the whole um, cause. There was, there's, there's a word that was causing that yellowish um, effect, but that he had stayed more than 24 hours on earth and since nothing happened to him we, could, we didn't have to put him under any um, lights and it was fine you know and five days after i went home with my baby of course it wasn't easy but like i said it was worth every pain i had to become a mother immediately i mean i had to start breastfeeding and Every time I want to complain, I would say, you could have gone, you know, but you chose to stay with me. Thank you for staying. And everything just, I'll just keep doing it. Baby is going to be nine months on Saturday. And the journey has been beautiful. It's been my sunlight, my ray of joy. And, well, that was... But that is my betting experience and um, I know I'm not mentally ready <laughs> um, considering all I went through I'm not mentally ready that's the truth for another one but I'm hoping that the next one <laughs> will be a better experience okay so my baby's names are Ulua Dapira Tireni Ulua Ethan Ethan means young warrior Tireni Ulua means, he's yours, Lord. Ulua Dabira means, God has done wonders. But I call him Ulua Fia Dabira Laini. It means that God has used you to do wonders in my life. He used you to take away pain. He used you to take away shame. He used you to take away, you know, other words that the world has called me then. Because it wasn't easy having to wait. So, that's it.